Hello guys, welcome back. In the last lecture, we learned about MVC architecture and how MVC architecture works. And in this part, we will create a resource using Rails scaf folding feature and then uh, we will see how uh, scaffold works and what we get when we generate a resource from scaf folding. So, and this is the second item of our part three. Let's start with the scaffolding. But before scaffolding, first understand what the scaffold is. So, a scaffold is a set of automatically generated files which forms the basic structure of a Rails resource. So, it it is like it automate the process of uh, creating uh, controllers, models, and views manually. However. It only comes with some standard controller actions and some standard form fields and views and uh, the standard model structure. If you need to in add any custom stuff there, you need to do it manually. But uh, when you resource generate a scaffold resource, you will get uh, manually, mainly like a controller file, a model file for a resource, and views for all standard controller actions like index, edit, show, and new, and it also provides a database migration to create your resource table into database. So let's start with the scaffold generation now. So you can see that our server is running here. Here is our web page server is running. Now let's uh, open the new tab and create a user resource by running this command rails. With the fonts, rail generate, rail generate is scaffold. This is your resource name. Whatever resource name you want to create a scaffold for, you can put here. But remember one thing that this name should be singular. Like you should not add here rail G scaffold users. You should only use rail G scaffold user. Now add some. Feature and I like name of string type, email of string type, address of string type again, and contact of string type. Now, when you hit enter, it will generate the user model users controller and a view directory and a users directory inside the views which will contain the templates for index uh, edit create uh, index edit show and new template and it also creates some partials for form and some json file to render json response and so on so let's hit enter here so now you can see that it is starting generating the file. Now let's see that. In the, the controller, you can see your user controller has been generated here. This is the default controller which is generated by scaffold. You don't have to write uh, these stuff manually now like uh, index dot index section show new edit create update destroy private methods for finding users and private methods for setting permitting params and this is the model this is the model you can see here and now let's see the views you can see inside the app views directory you can see that a users folder has been generated which contains partial for form and a partial for editing the uf template for editing user which renders the form partial and and part template for new user which also renders the form partial because uh, form partial is common for both editing user and creating a new user so we will render the single partial here and that is the advantage of partial that uh, we seen uh, 
in the last lectures when we created headers and footers that we can use them as a common into as a common templates into multiple other templates so this form partial can be included into edit and form edit and new templates so we can save our time to write this amount of code into both files now this is the index it's give you a tabular view to show all list all the users and it is the show file where you will see the user details now also one more thing that we need to check that it has it also created a user migration it is the first migration that we have created in our demo app so far this is the migration and it is the structure of rails migration i will explain more about rails migration in my upcoming videos and i will share the link with you guys and uh, for now this is only the table structure here right now our seed file is empty and we will add some data here in coming lectures now let's run this migration for example open the file this is giving you oh sorry refresh the server and this is giving you the migration pending error why because we just generated a scaffold a resource through scaffolding and you can see here that it has generated this migration and your application will run successfully only if you have all of your migration run if there is any pending migration then your app will not run successfully and you have to run migration and to run migration you have to run this command it's db migrate so when you run this command this will create a table of uh, users inside the schema you can let's check this is schema.rv you can see here that uh, user table is now now you one can question that uh, here are only four fields that we have added name email address and contact but in schema it is showing six attributes that is created at and updated it so these are two default attributes which are added by rails by default now uh, you can check here, here as well that these are generated through these fields time stamps methods and it has added create created it and updated it attributes and the last thing now we need to check is that uh, you can see open your routes file and you can see here that it also added resources users inside routes.rb as well so when routes.rb you have added routes.rb it will capture all the standard routes like create users update users delete users new users and listing users so basically it will create all possible routes with http verbs here so now let's minimize these folders because we don't need this right now and we only need to check is that our server is running our browser is running successfully because we have run migration so let's refresh this page you can see here now let's come to user so type in in the url please type users page so you can see that there is no user right now so it's only name email address and contact empty field and there is a link to create new user and this is the form so now let's create a single user and you can see that when I submit the user was created successfully and it is the show page of user let's click to the back and you can see that it is the table uh, which is showing the user first user created here now let's understand our mvc clearly now i'm clicking on this link and this link is served by users controller new as html and it will render users new dot html dot erb now when you submit the data the request is come as started post as uh, slash users 
and it is processed by users controllers create action and all this data you are getting here as params like user my user name email address contact and then set queries running here and you can also see that uh, which line is running this command users controller line number 27 and it is beginning the transaction so let's see this command line number 27 because it is calling at the rate user dot save so it is beginning a transaction here and after create you can see that it is redirecting user because as i mentioned in the last lecture when i was uh, explaining mvc architecture that when you receive a post request your controller will redirect you to browser so it is redirecting me to show page at the rate user and when it comes to the request then it is processed by users controller show action and it renders the this partial users show.html.erv okay see some notices here and all that so this is how user mvc works and now it's time to check it out so this is the index action and create action we have checked so far now let's click editing user let me add some uh, update its address can i update value the updated value is displaying here and you can see that when i update a user the request come to the users update action and it uh, begin the transition at line number 40 because uh, i am updating an existing record so it again uh, begin a transaction and since it's a patch request so patch request also uh, redirect the page redirect the request to browser and it has redirected on show page you can see here let's come to use controller so whenever you update a request a resource successfully it will also redirect to the show page of that resource and now let's try by deleting so when you delete a resource it will redirect to the index page of users list let's destroy this user you can see here user has been destroyed successfully and it also reload the page and redirected to the index page now so we have checked the functionality of uh, how resource works in rails now let's create another user without entering any data you can see here that i am able to uh, in insert a user with empty details for name email address and contact and still it is showing in the database just why because we haven't applied any validation so far so that is uh, saving with uh, empty attributes but uh, this should not be the case in real life we must validate our data before saving into the database so we will add a validation to this resource in the next lecture and so far please try it this uh, at your end and you can create uh, other resources using scaffold with uh, whatever you want to create as a resource and uh, then we will meet in the next lecture with uh, adding some validation to the user model thanks for watching this video